Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, we just did, just for that record, we just um, approved the council meeting minutes for November 10th. Now we're going to move to November 17th, council meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any extensions? And then let's move to work session meeting minutes, December 1st. Move to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Extensions? All right. Going to the village official reports, let's start with Chief Delp for police. I don't have anything to add at this time to the report I submitted. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Chief at this time? Okay. Jeffrey Wilczek is excused for tonight. Um, he has been at the last few meetings, and we've gone over quite a bit for some of our ordinances, so I think... Um, we're pretty covered on finance at this point. Um, but if anybody does have any problems, questions, concerns, you may reach out to him via email or myself. Um, or reach out to Brian. Sure. <laughs> All right. Mike Flickinger for engineer. Um, his engineering report is as follows. Task order number 18 is the 2021 storm sewer improvement project. Using the as-built information provided by the contractor, they updated the Village Storm Sewer GIS documentation. Task order number 20 is the 2022 Storm Sewer Improvement Project. They continue with detailed design developing contract drawings for the review with the village and to coordinate parcel-specific issues with property owners as needed. They discovered a potential conflict with an existing sanitary sewer, which requires to adjust the slope of one section of the new storm sewer. And they will continue to coordinate with the surveyors on the easement work. Um, this is also known as the Jordan Road Project. So, okay. Next, we have the task order number 22, 2022 CCTV inspection analysis. The village's regular cleaning and televising contractor is shutting down business at the end of this month. Um, they have been contacting clients to identify potential contractors to perform this work in the future. They are recommending discussing options in January or February of 2023 to, desert, to determine how to proceed with the 2023 village CCTV program. And task order number 23 is the Lake Master Planning Service. They visited the channel feeding the North Lake to begin preparing the technical memo detailing potential improvements to the area. And they began developing scopes of work for the topographic and... Well, okay. Huh? No, that's not what this says. Bathymetric. Oh, yeah. Oh, topographic and... <laughs> no. And bathymetric survey of the lakes. I was like, wait, no, that's not what it says. Okay, so that is your Mike Flickinger report. Does anybody have any questions? All right, next we have legal team, Jesse. Uh, nothing formal, the thing I wanted to note, there are two uh, pieces of legislation tonight that we're requesting uh, suspension of the rules that require three readings. One is uh, ordinance 382022, uh, and that's just final supplemental appropriations for this year. Uh, and then the other was one that just came over to you uh, this morning. That's resolution 2022-36. Uh, that is, is following up on what we discussed last week about the snow removal services with Blendon. Uh, it is a resolution that authorizes the mayor to enter a contract with Blendon, uh, basically not to exceed a certain amount of dollars, uh, like we talked last week, the, the amount that makes the whole from the tip. So that's what that is so that we don't miss um, so, so that we have snow removal services ready to go if we need them. That's all. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions at this time for Jesse? All right. Let's move over to Eric Fisher for Village Planning. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two quick items to wrap the year up. Uh, building is moving along. Uh, as expected, we did run into we have we do run into issues with the older structure. Uh, there was an extra 500 square feet of bad concrete uh, over where the old EMT fire station was. Uh, that is being uh, handled and we'll add an extra seven grand to build as well as the contingency, obviously. Um, and on top of what Jesse stated, uh, I did speak to John G. Marco, who was the interim, uh, uh, interim administrator for the township today. He had a trustee meeting last night. They went over uh, these items with the trustees. 
trustees are all good to go. Um, you make a poll, those services will be um, or there'll be there's no service for all. So there we go. Does anybody have any questions for Eric? All right, John Canty's report is in the um, packet for our zoning officer. If anybody has any questions, problems, concerns, feel free to reach out to him or myself. Um, also, just as an FYI, there are no addresses listed on one of the pages. Um, we had actually discussed that a couple different times, and the final answer was we didn't really want to put residents on blast. So that is why those addresses are not on there. Um, it has been requested for you know multiple people that um, you at least give them the opportunity to take care of some of the things before you put them on blast. So once they're you know if there's a fine or you know that maybe we continue to take it a little bit further. But um, in respect to some of our residents that either didn't know um, and they rectify the you know they get it fixed as soon as possible. There's no reason to have all of their information put out there um, if they are willing to get it fixed in a timely fashion. So that's the answer for, um, and that was an email that came in, so I just wanted to, to address that. Um, next, we have planning and zoning. Brian Wolf. Oh, planning and zoning has not had a meeting since uh, my last report. There is a meeting next Wednesday, the 14th. Yes. Here at Minerva, France, at like probably like 7 o'clock. Yes. There you go. Perfect. And that would also be AKA President Wolf. That's fine. <laughs> All right, and then MPCA, um, Nicole is excused. Uh, I know that they have their children's party on Saturday. Does anybody have the time off the top of their head? 10, 10. to noon. 10 to noon, and then Sunday is the trolley rides from 6 p.m. to <sighs> 8, and that is at Hawthorne. Um, I believe you need to sign up and get a time slot correct. for that already. So. Correct. I believe that everything is on Facebook or on their website for that information or reach out to somebody on MPCA if you have any problems, questions, or concerns. Um, let's go to uh, communications. Um, Councilperson Tressa is not here. I know that they have not had any, I don't know. Does anybody on that committee want to comment on communications? Uh, the big thing we're working on there or, or looking to slowly work our way through is a survey similar to what went out years ago to the residents just collecting information preferences, what are your hopes, dreams for the village, that sort of thing. Awesome. All right. Um, that is still in a pretty early phase, to be honest. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, Council President Wolf for finance. Uh, also not another finance meeting since, uh, since my last report, uh, but we have the uh, budget, the 2023 budget, and a number of appropriations to assist in closing out of 2022 in tonight's legislation. Thank you. And let's go to council person costs for streets. We haven't had a meeting yet, but we are planning on having one um, after the holidays. Things are still kind of going in the direction that we want them to. We're still um, working on the Jordan Road project. Um, nothing is stopping for that. So we're just kind of waiting on final plans uh, from Jacobs. I'm still in touch with the residents about um, how this will impact them. So I actually um, tried to contact one of the residents today, so we're still working on that. Um, that's all I got. So we're still we're still moving along. Perfect. And the Jordan Road, Cleveland Avenue pothole was fixed today. Yep, and that was fixed today and it looks amazing. And then um, as far as I know, I don't think we have had any issues with that pipe. I drove past it today. Okay. It's gone mysteriously but if it reappears then you know we'll take care of it as well okay perfect thank you and council person camera for community yes so um we did have a community meeting this past week um a couple of highlights um we uh have uh, come up with pool fees for next year we're doing a first reading tonight uh, the hope is that we have everything read and approved by the end of January uh, and can start selling pool memberships March 1st. A um, couple highlights from that this year that you'll see, um, we are not recommending any price increase for residents this year, uh, leaving that fees, those fees the same. Um, we are looking at um, 
partnering with MPCA for an early bird registration that is for MPCA members only, uh, or one that's larger for MPCA members at $25, and then uh, residents can get 15 for one. You'll see that in this next legislation. Um, and then uh, added, uh, I hope it's in here because I forgot to read it. Did we put the uh, birthday party and maybe not. So I, it I, might be a revision, but we'll see. I'm pretty uh, sure it is. But uh, I saw uh, so many birthday parties at the pool, we decided to kind of put something in there where you can get your party of 10 with two adults and get some ice cream and water with that as well. So it will discount on that. So those are the new things. All the membership tiers that we had last year, we decided to move forward with those. Um, and again, we'll see all of those. Uh, in the in the uh, ordinance that's in front of us tonight, There's um, some tweaks we talked about there. concession. Uh, we are going to see a increase in price on concession items next year. Uh, I think that's just a given. Uh, but uh, we have removed all of the uh, all but one of the vending machines from the pool. Uh, I believe the last one will be out before the pool season opens, and we will be the sole um, way for. Uh, guests to yeah. mm -hmm. um, it is our recommendation and obviously we have to work through the, the um, back end of this but um, we talked about selling alcohol at the pool um, the pool manager um, you know we wanted his input in that because he is the person that's down there seven days a week uh, eight nine hours a day ten and sometimes um, he is okay with beer wine type items, but recommends that uh, for next year we schedule those on certain weekend nights, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock to the pool close, uh, to see how that works. So uh, the mm -hmm. committee is uh, okay with that recommendation from the pool manager. We'd like to proceed with that if we can work it with that. Um, we are planning to purchase a new slide next year. We have uh, uh, focused on which one we want. We just have to get with the um, not installer, but the person that would inspect it to make sure that we are meeting all requirements for uh, that pool slide. And once we get that going, then we'll try to get that purchase next year. Um, we have uh, reached out to the chair vendor and have gotten a quote for new chairs for next year, which uh, will be nice, some more new chairs. So we'll, uh, if the, everything goes through with the budget tonight, um, we'll be looking at 40 more chaise loungers and 40 new dining chairs that go around the picnic tables uh, to be added next year and those will be ordered in January um, and so that was it for pool so we did a lot around the pool but again we want to get that started early um, we talked through the entrances and, and appreciate the work that was done on all the entrances we think that there's some some work still to do on those and uh, as we work with the landscape company for next year, we'll address those for them. Uh, we also talked about the amphitheater. Uh, our recommendation, because we want to involve the residents that live near the amphitheater, is to uh, have an event there, you know, just run electricity, get a generator or something like that, and have a uh, band to perform or some event there so that we can get input from the neighbors on uh, what what that sounds like to them and what they'd like to see as we start making recommendations for usage of that space. Um, so more to come on that. And then we briefly, briefly talked about the shelter um, and that, pro that proposition um, mostly focus on um, what we can do to address the concerns around the basketball court. Um, and so we continued some small discussions around stop signs over there. Uh, parking, possibly maybe a reserve spot for if you if we put a shelter in, then you get a reserve spot over there uh, and um, cameras on the basketball court um, as part of the building. So, uh, and that is really it for community. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Um. We're getting word that people can't really hear anything that we're saying. So I know most of us talk loud, um, but if we could try to talk a little louder than we typically do. Um, 
just as an FYI, I don't know, I'm assuming it's because of that, but um, if we could just raise our voices a little bit more than we usually do, let's see if it works. Um, next we have Councilperson McNamara for safety. Uh, we have not had a meeting since my last report. Perfect. Keeps posted on the next one. Yep, there, there may be one, there may be one upcoming pending schedules and um, Perfect. discussion Perfect. topics. Perfect, thank you. And next, we have Councilperson Brueger for legislation. All right, we did not have one in December. We normally have ours on the second uh, meeting, for the second meeting. And with the work session that was Monday and going over legislation then, I did not deem it necessary for, for this meeting. So the next one will be before the second meeting in January. Um, we have a full schedule of legislation tonight. Most of it is legislation that is on its third reading, though, and has been discussed prior. Perfect. Anybody have any questions for Councilperson Brueger on legislation? All right. Well, Mayor's report. Um, I'm usually, uh, I try to keep it a little short and brief and all that. I can't promise that it's going to be that way tonight. Um, obviously, we're at the end of the year, so I just kind of want to tell everybody um, some of the updates that we have for this year and also thank so many people that keep this village running um, day in and day out. So I'm going to start at the beginning um, and then hopefully I'll, everybody knows I talk fast too, so hopefully that helps. So starting with Chief, um, working with him every single day is, it's wonderful. Um, we have a Chief that, actually, that does care about this village. He cares about his police department. Um, he shows up every day, has a smile on his face, no matter what. Um, some days is probably harder than others, um, but here he is. Um, Lieutenant Phillips, Sergeant Fout, and all of the police department, again, show up every single day. Um, they keep our village safe. They run through the village constantly. Um, whether it's something minor, major, every single one um, is here. So. I can't thank them enough for everything that they do. And again, we have had a great last couple years of just not having complaints or anything like that or anything that I see as being a problem. So again, Chief, you are running a phenomenal police department and I thank you for making my life a lot easier um, by not having problems. So again, I thank you guys. Um, Leah Klein is not here, um, she works in she kind of does a little bit of everything, and I kind of say that about Barb as well. Um, she works with our police day in and day out. She also does a lot of our financing, and without her, um, I can easily say that things would not run the way that they run. Um, she is there every single day. She is one of our most reliable people, pers person that we have had, um, and it is very difficult, as we know, with some people that we've gone through um, it's very difficult to find reliable people, and Leah is definitely one of those. Jeff is a new addition. Um, our finance team, he is absolutely incredible. Again, we laugh quite a bit in there, but he definitely has gotten this finance, um, our budget. We've been able to do things that none of us thought we were going to be able to do. So again, thank you to both of them. And then, of course, Barb. Barb is here, so I know she hates when I say certain things, but again, without Barb, I have absolutely no idea what we would do. Um, Barb comes in every single day. She does everything for you guys. I would like to take credit for a lot of the things that she does, but honestly, I won't. Um, she, she keeps me. She reminds me. Um, I, I, she, I think she probably even tells me when I have my own doctor's appointment. So mm. Barb is phenomenal, and again, it's just it's so nice to wake up every single morning and know that everything... I, it runs completely without me, and I hate to say that, but it does. Um, without me, they would be fine. Um, and then, of course, Brian. Um, you have worked with a couple great seasonal people, part-timers, um, but at the end of the day, you are, oh, I hate to say a one-man show, but you have really, you bust your butt <laughs> every single day. And again, we thank you. Um, code enforcement officer, again, same thing. Day in and day out, he has he comes in, he gets the stuff done. Um, Eric, again, you're one of the other ones that without you, I have absolutely no idea what I would do. So every once in a while, we do butt heads. Um, but I guess that's the fun part of it. 
uh, but again, without you dealing with Westerville City Schools and MI Homes and, and some of the resident questions, problems, without you, I, again, I have no idea what I would do. Um, Jesse, everybody at your firm has been phenomenal. We have actually needed them more than we probably needed them in the last however many years, um, probably since the MI Homes thing. Um, we have used quite a few people at Frost Brown Todd, and again, they have every single person there has been phenomenal. Our engineer, Mike Flickinger, and the whole Jacobs team, um, Stacy, you will definitely agree with this. Without him, um, we would not have working sewers probably at this point. So um, he is so easy to work with and just always, always gets back to me within, within hours. Um, and then, of course, everybody's sitting up here um, for getting the legislation passed for the building and the legislation that we have for the TIF, you know, the bond and all of that, getting that done so we can get the, the building done, the lakes. Um, the number one thing I wanted to do when I started here in 2022 was to get the lakes moving and the building and the East Shore Court project. That's been tens of years trying to get that done. Now the Jordan Road project should be done by the end of 2023. Um, so without you guys, that legislation would not have passed. And I don't think you guys know what that means to a lot of residents. I know, unfortunately, sometimes we hear the negative, the negative, and the negative. Um, but it is nice to kind of walk through the streets and hear people how excited they are seeing the, prog the progress that the building has and knowing that their lakes are actually going to get done this time. Planning and zoning. All of the volunteers, Brady, um, actually, I'm not going to name all of their names because I'll probably miss one and then I'll, I'll get in trouble. But planning and zoning is always our, our group that's forgotten. Um, but they spend a lot of time. Don't worry, I'm almost done. Um, they spend a lot of time, volunteer hours, and I don't ever want them to think that their work goes unnoticed. And then, of course, MPCA. Um, MPCA does so much great work with the kids, all the kids' programs, and... We wouldn't, we wouldn't have the time to do those types of things. So again, I'm very grateful. I'm so excited for next year. Um, they've got some good things planned for next year. Um, last but not least, definitely not, um, our pool staff and John. Um, pool season is always my favorite time of the year. Everybody knows that. <laughs> so John is, I, 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 talk about reliability with some of these people, but there's never a day I have to worry about if the pool's gonna open or if it's gonna open on time. So he runs that pool seven days a week for however many weeks it is and never have to worry about it. So again, everybody here, thank you so much for a great year because I feel like the number one thing I heard and I ran into somebody at Kroger today, so if you're watching this, you will laugh, but um, it's nice to see these things get done and to actually have a resident in the middle of nowhere say how excited they are to see some things get done. It makes you realize that what you're doing is worth it. So that's the end of my report. I appreciate you guys. And now let's get to citizen comments. This is the portion of our meeting where we invite the, uh, any <coughs> residents or any, any of the public here to come up and address council. Uh, state your name and address for the record and you have five minutes. Should have added you to my list since you were here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't want to talk about the email that I've been sending out. Uh, I do appreciate Jason and Nikki got back with me and shared their thoughts about the leash on tonight. The mayor, you know, addressed one of my emails about the code enforcement officer report. And I'd like to respectfully disagree with your your Fine. assumption that the addresses don't need to be on that report because that's a public record. Now, what you're saying is that now I didn't have to put on the report, and so now I'm going to have to public records request every month to get the addresses for the uh, violations of the code enforcement office. So Jesse, if you could please, you know, talk to the mayor about that, because that's what's going to end up happening. If you don't do that, then we're going to create more work. Why don't you just put the addresses on the donor report? Because I want to see what you guys are, what the code enforcement officer is doing, and who he's you know, confronting about their fence being bad. For instance, on these two, or the two things on the uh, report this month. Now, I, you know, I sent out other questions, Mayor, that was in the same email. 
where does it say you need to get a permit for a driveway or a patio? I've continued to ask that. Eric's come back with a use of right of way, is what his opinion was the part of the code that says you need a permit to install a driveway. I respectfully disagree with that. And I've asked this question repeatedly. And Brian, at the end of last year, said, oh, yeah, I, I found it, but I can't remember what it is. And, you know, so if you found it, why are you having trouble finding it again? Is what I'm saying. And it goes to the communication here, guys. It's horrible. If you look at the, the newsletter, it says if you want to get an update for uh, legislation, you go to government, tap government, tap legislation. Well, if you go to that, the only thing that you'll find are the ordinances that have already been passed. And they weren't, they haven't been updated since the end of October. So if anybody wanted to understand what's going on, what you're about to do, you have to go to the agenda package. You have to understand, I know how to find it, but I don't think the majority of the residents understand that the only way you can find out anything here, guys, is you gotta go to the website, you gotta go listen to the meetings that you can't hear, or look at the minutes. You know, so the communication is horrible. It's, it's, it's the worst it's ever been. That's why we created a communi uh, communications uh, committee was to address those issues and now you guys are talking about getting rid of that or, or minimizing it. It should be a full-time job to every month that the council get together and decide what it is that they want to inform the residents about and how to go about doing that. Because right now, if you, the mayor's report consists of go to the website basically and that has, you have to really know how to, to navigate the website to figure anything out. It's gotten to the point where there's only, there were seven views of this meeting, or the last council meeting. So if residents are supposed to understand, or I can't see how you expect residents to understand what's going on by going to the website when there's no, it's hard to find the information. Uh, so I really would like to get an answer to those questions. Where does it say you need a permit for a patio and a driveway? And I'd like to see the addresses on the report. I don't think that's happened too much. Unless you want more public record requests. Thank you so much. And um, we have other citizens, as right. Council President would would remind me. Yeah. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Okay. Moving right along. Moving right along. Legislation. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, um, we do have quite a list of legislation to go through, uh, and most of them are third readings looking to get passed tonight, so let's get right into it. Uh, the first one being Ordinance Number 30, 2022, an ordinance to amend the codified ordinances of the Village of Minerva Park to include Section 618.20 regarding keeping certain animals under direct control. Uh, this is a third reading. Uh, I know we've talked about it in council before. Um, this actually uh, ups our current leash law, which just says uh, you need to have a leash unless your animal is under reasonable control. Uh, it was thought particularly by, I pointed out there that she's here, I think she's not, uh, council person Shrestha that uh, that's a little bit too fuzzy, so we move to the direct control language that many other municipalities use. Uh, this is the third reading, and I move passage. Thank you, Mr. Camera. Any debate on it? Okay. All right. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. Councilperson Berger. Aye. Councilperson Koss? Aye. Councilperson Camera? Aye. Council President Wolf? Aye. Okay. Okay. Moving on to Ordinance 32 2022. An ordinance to make appropriations for the current expenses of the Village of Minerva Park for the year 2023. I know we have a couple of these, Mayor. Do you want to speak to which one this is oh, wait. real quick? No, because I don't know. Hang on. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm this sorry. Is the, <laughs> yeah, this, is the, this is our budget. Yeah, I was going to say, this is the budget. <laughs> this is the big one. I know we actually. <laughs> we need that. Yeah. We need this one. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. For the fiscal year 2023, I, I know we're doing some stuff with the leftover uh, yes. EMS funds, and I didn't want to. Wait, did you do 3822 or? No, uh, we're. 3022, now to 3222. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm on the wrong page. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so this is next year's budget. Sorry, guys. That's one I should have been able to tell you about. <laughs> and the fact that uh, it is, I think it's just that the Exhibit A is not attached to my paper form, as that would be tons and tons of printing. Um, this is our budget for next year. We've talked about it. And I move that we pass it. Second. second. Oh. Moved and second. Anyone okay, want to talk about anything? Doesn't matter. Oh, it does for the minutes. M yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Put it for me. But camera and... Got it. Costs. Uh, costs also. Okay. We have a third and a fourth. Okay. But you can put Which kind of tells you about how it's going to go as far as the vote, but let's all hang on and just wait and see. Okay. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. Council Person Bruger. Aye. Council Person Koss. Aye. All right, moved and passed. All right, moving on. Ordinance 332022, an ordinance updating the wage and salary ranges, the number of employees, and positions for the village of Minerva Park, and declaring an emergency. Um, the main changes here are in our police force. Excuse me. Uh, compensation being bumped up a little bit to put us more in line with other local municipalities so we can hire and maintain a quality police force. Um, I move that we pass as an emergency. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Anyone with anything to say? All right. Councilperson right. Brueger. Aye. Councilperson Camera. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Councilperson Koss. Aye. Councilperson McNamara. Aye. And I almost forgot to mention, the reason we're passing that as an emergency along with this next one is so that they can go into effect on January 1st, the next calendar year. Um, which brings us to Ordinance 34-2022, an ordinance establishing health care benefits for employees and the mayor and authorizing the purchase of health insurance and declaring an emergency. As mentioned, the emergency is so it can take effect January 1, otherwise people's benefits will lapse. And I move that we pass it as an emergency. Second. Moved and seconded. Any debate? No. Council, Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Brueger. Aye. Council Person Koss. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. All right. Now we're getting into the things I thought we had earlier. Ordinance 35 2022 is an, an ordinance to rescind Ordinance 23 2015 EMS Vehicle and Related Equipment Fund and to declare an emergency. Um, as most people know, we used to have part time EMS service. We had money to pay those workers. We put aside, geez, what was it, like 25000 a year to. Uh, Bank for new EMS vehicles every five years, That's something true. like that. Like that. Yeah. Anyway, there was a fair amount of money put into that fund. Uh, we no longer run our own EMS, and this is finally closing some of those last things down. I move, this is being a third reading, I move passage as an emergency so we can get it off the books for the next fiscal year. Second. Moved and seconded. Any debate? Okay. Council Person Brueger. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council Person Koss. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. All right, moving on to Ordinance 36 2022, an ordinance to establish funds and declare an emergency. Um, this is going to be funds for the Storm Sewer Improvement Fund for next year, as well as a pool fund a pool improvement fund to start squirreling away money in that for the hopefully long away but inevitable 
uh, catastrophe that eventually fools face. <laughs> That's a nice way to say it. Well, it's, uh, it's what, 60 years old? Yes. 60 year old concrete in there. I will second that. Uh, I move to pass as an emergency. I'm sorry, I think <laughs> I did not. Uh, I will move to second it a second time. There you go. All right. Moved and seconded. Any debate? Okay. Council person Koss? Aye. Council person Camera? Aye. Council President Wolf? Aye. Council person Bruger? Aye. Council person McNamara? Aye. Okay, Ordinance 37 2022, an ordinance to make supplemental appropriations for the current expenses of the Village of Minerva Park for the year 2022. Um, this is just making this year right. Yeah, this is making year this year right. I believe, if I remember correctly, a lot of this um, is because of the police department who I believe ran out of gas money or we're coming close to that or we're over budget on that. This is the BWC one. This is the what? Is that it? No, that's the next one. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because oh, the next sorry. one is... Yeah, I, don't have, I don't have the... Uh, okay, so this is finally moving that money out of the fund. What is this? This is that four of them that are all about that. Go to the next one. Um, we do not need to pass this as emergency, but I do move to passage, and I apologize that is the for the EMS confusion. One. Okay. If anyone out there is watching, yes. second. That's the EMS. Moved and seconded. Thirty-seven. Okay. Council person. Okay, wait. Who seconded? I did. Brian. Council person Berger. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Koss. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. Yeah. So this is the one I was. The next about. one, yeah, that's this one. All right. Ordinance thirty-eight twenty twenty-two, an ordinance to make supplemental appropriations for the current expenses of the Village of Minerva Park for the year twenty twenty-two. This is finally the one that I've been thinking all the other ones were all along where we have a shortage of funds to pay some of our employees and need to appropriate money to finish out the year. So, good, it finally showed up. This is also the one we need to wait readings. Yes. And this is also the one that we need yeah. to wait readings. Um, since we, I, I assume, recently found out that we need this money and need to get it reasonably soon. All right, so I guess my first motion is that we waive the second and third reading. Okay. Moved and seconded. Anyone have any objections to that or debate or things they want to say in general? Okay. All right. Council person Koss? Aye. Council person Camera? Aye. Council President Wolf? Aye. Council person Bruger? Aye. Council person McNamara? Aye. All right, having waived the reading, I uh, second and third reading, I will move for passage. Second. Any debate? All right, Mayor Hughes. Councilperson McNamara. Right, no, you're good. <laughs> Councilperson <Aye>. McNamara. <laughs> Councilperson Brueger. Aye. Councilperson Koss. Aye. Councilperson Camera. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. All right, moving on to our own happy little internal world. Um, a resolution adopting the rules of council for the Council of the Village of Minerva Park for 2023. Um, not a lot of changes for people to know about. Um, if you were listening early, Mr. Benedetti talked about changes to the communication uh, committee, there's actually in this one uh, a sort of a re shuffling of some duties that is affected by that. Uh, communications is being changed over to services, and the community committee is being renamed the Recreation and Parks Committee as pools, lakes, and most of the things they deal with could be considered our parkland. Um, other than that, meetings continue on Thursday, 
Pledge of Allegiance stays at the top of the agenda. And uh, calendar's updated for the year. Calendar has been updated for the year. And that is council meeting calendar. Uh, of course, committee meetings meet at different times when the committee is available. And we've been working on some of the clerical errors as well. All right. I think it's important to point out that we're not taking communications out. Correct. We're just changing the title. Correct. It's still part of that committee. Mm -hmm. So communications are still important. Yes, the, the, the new services committee there, just why not? Their, right, their blurb is to provide oversight regarding refuse removal, leaf pickup, maintenance of village property, and to provide support for effective and timely communications to village residents. This is accomplished through the support of the village administration, mayor, and residents. Uh, so I move for passage. It's just a regular third reading. We just have to pass it regularly. Moved and seconded by Councilperson Tamara. Okay. Any discussion? Council President Wolf? Aye. Councilperson Camera? Aye. Councilperson McNamara? Aye. Councilperson Brueger? Aye. Councilperson Koss? Aye. All right, resolution 2022-34, a resolution authorizing the transfer of funds and declaring an emergency. We're going to be transferring $93,600 from the general fund to the Storm Sewer Improvement Fund. That's right, let's get the short court finished. And Jordan Road. Jordan oh, is it, this is the Jordan? Yes. Okay, so this isn't shore enough be shore. <laughs> all right, this is for the Jordan Road. Um, that's all the same area. Huh. Eh, close enough. We need help over here. <laughs> I move that we pass as an emergency. Second. Second. Dang it. Give it to me. I'm giving it to Koss. This is her. This is her this baby. This is my baby. <laughs> okay. Uh, any discussion on that? I think people are waiting for me. Okay. This is 2022-34. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, we skipped one, so I'm. We just, did. I don't you're... have it, but I can. Uh, it's on my agenda, so I will read that. You are next. totally fine. I just want to make sure that, for the yeah, record, no, this is 34. Jason was right on my shoulder with it. Perfect. Okay, Councilperson Brueger? Aye. Councilperson Camera? Aye. Council President Wolf? Aye. Councilperson Koss? Aye. And Councilperson McNamara? Aye. All right, and the one that got everyone confused because I skipped over it, Resolution 2022-32, a resolution authorizing the mayor and fiscal officer to enter into various reoccurring contracts. Excuse me necessary for the continuous operations of the village with an intent to pass as an emergency. There is a approved list that council looks at of various vendors whose services are regularly needed throughout the course of the year. Uh, this approves the mayor to enter into contract with those without having to come before council every time. Um, and I believe there's a price limit on it anyway. 50,000. There's a price limit of 50,000, anything above that, and of course, the council needs to approve those funds. 50,000 um, just a bit. Yeah. I move to pass that as an emergency. Second. Second. Okay. Councilperson Brueger? Aye. Council President Wolf? Aye. Councilperson Koss? Aye. Councilperson McNamara? Aye. Councilperson Camera? Aye. Okay, moved and passed. All right, our penultimate legislation tonight. Resolution 2022-35, a resolution establishing fees for membership for the Minerva Park Pool for the 2023 summer season. Um, first reading. Prices aren't going up, uh, memberships aren't going up for residents. Uh, daily rates? $12.15 for holidays. You're welcome. Any, uh, any five after five or anything? No, sir. Okay, I hate you all. Um, 
Well, anyway. All right, well, that has been read. Is, are those fee structures that you can take it online? If you look at the legislation, you can find them. Okay. So, resolution 2022-36, a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Blendon Township to provide snow removal services for the village of Minerva Park and declaring an emergency. Um, obviously, the emergency for this is winter is here soon, I imagine. Um, some background on this. We are, of course, our own independent village, but we are also part of Blended Township, which is why we get to vote for trustees and whatnot. Uh, part of our property taxes, of course, go to Blended Township. One of the things they do with that, other than maintain things like the Senior Center, which as a Minerva Park resident, you can go to because you're part of Blended Township. They also do snow removal. Um, as part of the TIF agreement we entered into for money for the building, we have locked off the property taxes that they would normally receive from all the new MI homes. Um, but we still expect them to plow those streets, even though the houses on those streets are not contributing. Uh, this would like us, this would essentially make them whole just on that. Um, a, an amount not to exceed $20,000. I believe $17,000 was the rough estimate of how much they're losing from the TIF. Uh, essentially what they're saying is, and what we agree with is, you're still gonna plow the streets. We should, that's a, a pressing enough thing that we should pay that. Um, and we are looking to waive readings on this so we can pass it before we get our first snowstorm sometime in February. We probably could have waited. We never get any heavy snow in December. But anyway, I move we waive the second and third reading. Second. What did you ever do? There are never any snowstorms in December. Sometimes in January. You just jinxed Sometimes us. Sometimes in January. You jinxed us. No, we're not. Uh -uh. Okay. Does anybody want to have any discussions? I know we've already talked about it. All right. This is just waving reading. All right. Council Person Bruger. Aye. Council President Wolf. Aye. Council Person Camera. Aye. Council Person Koss. Aye. Council Person McNamara. Aye. All right. Having waived the second and third readings, I can now move to pass it as an emergency. Second. Moved and seconded. Any debate? Okay. All right. Councilperson Koss? Aye. Councilperson McNamara? Aye. Councilperson Camera? Aye. Council President Wolf? Aye. Councilperson Bruger? Aye. And so ends legislation for this evening. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Wow. All right. Does anybody have any old business that they would like to discuss? As a point of old business, uh, and on behalf of Council, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the mayor for everything she has done uh, for the village in year, in in this year. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to second that. <laughs> All right. All right. That's all I got. Any? Oh, that's that's great. Does anybody have any more old business? Anybody have any new business? All right. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Get the hell out of here. Uh -huh. One hour.